This one is special. A special edition of Musically Speaking. In a number of different ways. Wow. Today we have a man who undoubtedly is a giant in media and entertainment. Now, you'll forgive me if I forget some of his titles. Right? Ethnomusicologist, lecturer, writer. He is a sound system operator, show producer, music producer. And we could go on and on, and I would take up this whole show telling you what he has done and what he has been doing. Today, we have a man who, among other things, to add to that list, he's a grandson of M Miss Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can't and, forget that. And the son of the great, and the son of the great Jimmy Sola. Legendary. <laughs> legendary Jimmy Sola. And the father of Jerusalem. Now, I mean, uh, do, the others don't feel anyway. <laughs> Jerusalem is the one right here. And so, this one is special. Special because this man and I, well, we're brothers. We go a long way in terms of our, our path, career path. Yep. Yeah. And this man is a pioneer in broadcasting, you know, one of the, the, the creators of the iconic Irie FM, which this particular institution, the bridge, traces its origin. Yeah. So that's that's a whole other story. But we're not going to give you all of that today because I have a man who I've not called his name just yet. He is Dennis Oliver Howard, PhD. <laughs> and I'm telling you that when it comes to music, you know, I always tease him and I say, you know, Howard, that's what I call him. And Howard the Great and Howie, I call him all kinds of names. <laughs> Um, when I when I talk to him about music, I always say, Howard, who swept the floor the night when the song was being made? Or um, who brought in the tea when that song was being recorded? Because he has all that detail <laughs> in music. His passion and his knowledge is vast. And today, we're going to get a treat because Dennis and I will be talking about some of these what I, I would call them, is that slow jams, Jamaican songs? That, they're, they're ballads. Uh, you, can, they're, you, can, you can call them all kind of things. They can be, well, originally the first name was R&B, Rhythm and Blues. So it's Jamaican Rhythm and Blues. Jamaican Rhythm and Blues. Then, as the time went on, it was soul music in the 70s. It was Jamaican soul. Jamaican soul. And uh, I guess it's now back at R&B. Uh, or, yeah, because R&B is a... Is a the, the more current term for it now. Or, what, and, and, but can I, 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 can I, I call I, it Jamaican slow jams? Yeah, yeah, or Jamaican ballads. Yeah, but, well, all right. So we mm. call them Jamaican ballads. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have, there is that category of music that a lot of people have not paid attention to. Uh, you, Dennis, yeah. uh, were, yeah. you are the, the perhaps the first person uh, who... I know who was a strong advocate of dub being a distinct genre, genre yeah. of music. Yeah. Um, but I don't recall your mentioning this genre of music. Wait, yeah, man. I've, you you I've, have? Yeah, I have. It's because it, uh, one of the reasons why I have always emphasized it is because it's one of the areas that we tend to forget. Uh, we tend to say that Jamaica produced reggae and dancehall and ska and rock steady. Uh, not realizing that Jamaica is more, Jamaican musicians are more versatile and that there's a period that uh, took place in the, 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 the 50s where between the 50s and the 60s that we produced a lot of rhythm and blues song, ton loads. But which you, we will deal with now. But you don't but categorize. I wouldn't call you it a Jamaican genre. You, it's not a Jamaican genre. It's not a Jamaican right, genre. Because but in is, terms, yeah, but, but it, go. Yeah, but you're saying that it is a music form which we have to pay attention to. Yeah, man, to. because we produce a lot of it. And we continue to produce music that, that is of the standard that can be comparable with any R&B tune anywhere in the world. 
And know. one of the leading exponents of that was Wilfred Jackie Edwards. Yeah. He was signed to Island Records um, with Chris Blackwell. You, yeah. You, 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 you have the stories. Yeah, man. You remember, his, he was Wilfred Edwards. Wilfred Edwards. And when he signed to Island, you know, Chris Blackwell wanted to give him a little sexiness for, for the pop market because, interestingly, you know, when Chris signed Jimmy Cliff and Wilford Jackie Edwards, which he signed before even... Bob Marley. Uh, Bob Marley. <laughs> and, and he signed Jackie Edwards before even Jimmy Cliff. In fact, one of, the, one of his earlier signings would be Laurel Aikens. Laurel Aikens. Will boogie in my bones. Yes. And then now, the interesting thing about the association with Jackie Edwards was he wasn't pos positioning him as a Jamaican artist. He was being positioned as an R&B pop artist. But he ended up really distinguishing himself as a, a songwriter. songwriter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because what he did with um, Keep On Running and that yeah, kind of yeah, thing, yeah. you know, Spencer Davis, Spencer group, Davis group, which, which yeah. evolved into traffic. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to talk about Wilfred Jackie Edwards. Let's hear Wilfred Jackie Edwards. Wilfred Jackie Edwards, Tell Me Darling. Yeah. A classic, right, Dennis? Absolutely. Yeah, interesting fact. Uh, DJ Marvin, is his, that's his father. Yeah, the great Jackie Edwards. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think Jackie's father was a, was a tailor, if I if I if I remember correctly. I think Copeland refers to Jackie mm. Edwards' his father in his book. Um, that, in point of fact, it was um, Jackie's father who made his his suit for his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you talk about uh, Taylor. We can't forget the great balladeer called Vic Taylor. He used to live up, he used to have a text, up, text lane, text right, lane. Right, 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 yeah. right across from George's. Yeah, yeah man, text mm -hmm. lane. Yes, yeah. I remember Vic so Taylor. We have to play, Ta have Vic play one of him. Song, Vic yeah. Taylor does it his, his way. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Big, 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 big timer. Yeah, from great voice. Great, great, great voice from, great. From, the, from the Byron Lee stable. I think at one point he was in the band itself and then started his solo, solo, solo uh, career. But B Byron did a lot in terms of these ballads, you know. Um, in the early days, you know, Byron touched for everything, you know. You know, he touched and, and, on a little sky. Yeah, and, and, and later on, later on, I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna play a sparrow. Yeah. That that yeah, that, that that that, that by, ballad too. Yep. That Byron produced. Think, yeah, I think it was on the from album from the the, 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 the sparrow meets the, the dragon. dragon. I think there were two of them because yeah. the sparrow meets the dragon, mm -hmm. and the sparrow meets the dragon again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, man. So, um, but the, it's interesting to 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 look at why we started to do ballads. Yes. So, sound system started in the late forties and was doing well in the fifties with all of the big sounds. And most of these sounds used to play R and B music. So it's either R and B ballads or drum blues. Mm -hmm. Like the Louis, Louis, Prima, jo Louis yeah, Jordan, Jordan yeah. Louis Prima, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And apart from that, it was the Rosco Gardens, it was the Smiley Lewis, it was the Professor Long Hair, mm -hmm. and all of these songs. So that was the staple for dances back in the in those days. Mm -hmm. But music changed, and in, by the late fifties, rock and roll was starting to emerge with Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and all of these white impersonators of, of of rock and roll who who who, who, who benefited even more than the well, little rich little richard says that yeah, these man, white pat guys Boone, pat Boone, be, I mean, pat, yes, yes i mean out sell, sell him because we know the racism and and white supremacy kind of behavior at that time so when the rock and roll was emerging in america and we weren't getting any of the delta blues type of music because them stopped recording them Right, so but, the, the beat changed for yeah, us. But the appetite for R&B and, and jump blues was still here in Jamaica. So what happened was that one of the first songs to, to be recorded, and again, I, I hate to talk about what was first because none of this is... is Entirely accurate, in, uh, accurate. Accurate, yes. You know, but one of the first songs was, was uh, a song by the Jiving Juniors. Uh, uh, what what is his name again? I can't remember the name right now. Is he? No, I know I know the song you're talking, yeah. but it's not it's not coming right back yeah. to me. But so give, that give was one of them. And then of course mm -hmm. there's another one by Bonnie and Scully, Till the End Til of the, Time. Yes, you know. And so 
the, the, these were done for sound systems, you know, because people wanted to hear more, more R&B music. And when it wasn't coming from America, they decided, all right, let us start recording. So most of these songs were not even studio recordings, you know. They were dub plates done right. at Stanley Motors. Be because they were done at Stanley Motors. Yeah, for in, sound system. For the sound system. I think it's important, Dennis, for us to mm -hmm. really emphasize the fact that the advent of what would say, I wouldn't want to say Jamaican owned studio, but yeah. uh, studio that were black owned yeah. had its genesis in the sound system. Yeah, absolutely. Because it, Coxon and, and Reed, these people, wanted exclusive songs yeah, yeah. for their for their sound yeah. systems yeah and that 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 made a whole difference in the whole trajectory of jamaican music because a lot of people would not understand how important the sound system is and i want to just but, but without that, the sound system without the music industry no 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 i want to just divert a bit because you have just introduced a course yeah. At, at, at Alpha. <laughs> Call. Yeah. I mean, in sound system, I want to know. What is it? I mean, people are going to want me asking. So what what, what, what is this now? You have a course in, in sound Absolutely. system. Absolutely. So, so you're teaching people to pull up yeah. and all them things. Yeah, well, of course we have to teach them so to it's pull up. Because it's per performative. Yeah, man. It's, a, uh, it's, it's both. So, all right. There's two courses that have been established since last year. One at Alpha and one at the University of the West Indies. Mm -hmm. So I developed a course for uh, in sound system and sound system culture for the University of the West Indies, which I should be teaching either this, no, well, next semester. But Alpha also uh, developed a course which leans heavily on the performative side of it to get a lot of the musicians that are doing their, their associate degree and have an interest in, in, in selecting and all of that, they will do, do that course. So we start the one at Alpha, and we're in a couple of weeks, and it is amazing. The kids, the, the, and it's female and, and males, they're, they're absolutely loving what, what they're hearing, and it is, it is also pointing out to me that despite the richness of our music, our young people don't know what we have. They are being blown away by... I ask them how much genres we have, and they tell me three. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so when I'm telling them about the different genres and stuff, they are freaking out. When I'm telling them, all right, there's a situation where they were saying, they were having this one-sided conversation because this is what is the narrative now, that reggae was this peace-loving, nice music that was very decent, and the dance hall is... Hardcore and slackness. And I'm telling them, listen, slackness, reaction, uh, revolutionary themes, everything that we associate with, with, with dancehall or with reggae, it gone back to mental music. Mental, I mean. Mental was the most alert, revolutionary alert, alert, music. Alert, 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 Bidassi and those guys. The night songs food. That, night food and even the Big Bamboo and all of those 69. Si I mean, and six, I mean, all these songs. Fuck, fuck, fuck up our garden. Y uh, yes, and water all, all garden. All of these water dirty the songs. Water the garden. Yes. Rukumbine yes. and our tampon pee. What, what do you think that was? Yes. Then you have Lord Chalmers and the low bites. The low bites, yes. When them used to do a whole a dirty song. Yes, Bob Wire. Prince Buster. Uh, okay, with, 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 with Bob Wire in the underpants. Yes. All of the Pum Pum song them. Yes. You know? All of them. Uh, what is khaki? Yes. I want to know what is khaki. Yeah. You know? All of them song this. So, reg slackness has been a part of, of our music from day one. The first song, the first genre to talk about Selassie is not reggae. It's mentor. His mentor talking about the arresting of Selassie. The first song to talk about repatriation is, is, is Lord Levy. Mentor music. So anything we hear, we are talking about. The first person for call them name in a song is not dancehall. Is not DJs. Is Lord Fudos. And boom bang and a bounty killer start that. <laughs> you find song with Lord, Lord, Lord Fudos, I say, boom bang, same way. So everything that you hear, you know and what it clashing, is? And clashing is not, not something that no. started Listen, with Sting. You see, the, you see, the, you see the, the cultural retention what we have in our in, our, in our society, based on what I call the, the creative echo chamber, 
a lot of people, even Bogle. When Bogle tell about him invent dance. No, it was I love the Bogle, I'm a brethren. But what every dance that Bogle seemingly invent was butterfly, it was, um junk it, it was part it, of Dinky the, Mini. The, the Mini it, and all and that. I, I remember that that him grew up on down a jungle. Yes. When we are grew up, jungle, downtown, a mania and revival, we see that every day. So it is part of our our our, our DNA. And so sometimes what we do now is to regurgitate it re, re, and, and reformat it. So it we, we, we take the we take the art form to another level with every generation. Yeah, but so there's but a lot of revisionism. Yeah, there's a lot of revisionism because yeah. people are are ascribing um, values and yeah. notions yeah. to some music past and gone. And the the tradition of 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 ballads and love song never started Jamer Jamaican R and B. It was in Mentor too. Yeah, Mentor 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 was all embracing. Listen. We talk about slapness. There was a there was a there was a, a female slap. Well, if we, if we talk uh, uh, double on yeah. we could talk that way. Her name, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, God God God. Soon soon tell her name. She had songs like Hotels on Wheel. She have a song named Cutting Wood. She have a talk about Give Me Perfect Love. Louis Lamb. All of them sang their song about sex. She was talking about the phenomenon of in the 50s. Men who had cars used to pick up girls and have sex with them in the car. She had another song named Give Me Perfect Love. So the man asleep on her and, and, and uh, give her perfect love. And then she said, she had a show named Cut, Cutting Wood. And you know who do over the song there? As Girl Wonder, Rita Marley. <laughs> Enough, 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 enough information. You see why? You see why he 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 has to be on this program, Doctor Dennis Howard. We're talking musically speaking today, and you know this is history because we are talking about the very foundation of the music. And Dennis, you know, it's interesting because a lot of the things that you and I are talking about, we weren't around when they were happening. Yeah. Yeah. And even if we were around, we were little kids. We were little kids, but it is important, and, and this now is very important for us to state, that a big part of how we have been able to position ourselves in the industry is due to our fathers. Yeah. And the opportunities they created for us in terms of just being able to access all of this information and being mm -hmm. around all of this that was happening and, yeah. and being able to see all of the figures, the major figures in the music when they were in their prime. And I think that is that is really what is, is most important yeah. in terms of our understanding this. We're gonna go take a little a little pause and go to Cayman Spark. And when we come back, you know, it's a lot of talk here because this is musically speaking with Dr. Dennis Howard today. <laughs> Musically speaking, Clyde McKenzie here with you and in studio with me is none other than Dr. Dennis Howard and he's taking us down memory lane, mm -hmm. telling us about things that he wasn't there to witness, but he certainly has a handle on them as, as, as uh, uh, we indicated before, many of what we're talking about, we weren't there but we have been reliably informed and we've been able to corroborate. Yeah, man, there's a thing called triangulation and there's research, interviewing people and uh, looking at secondary data and extrapolating from it and, and corroborating with, with, with people telling you how it go and all of them stuff there. And, 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 and what has happened is Lord Creator Mm -hmm. He came from elsewhere. He was Trinidad from, and Tobago. Right. In and fact, he was a, a Calypso singer. Yes, he was. And he came here and uh, he was very close to Randy. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Vincent Chin yeah, yeah. of VP fame. Yeah. In fact, um, the independence song, I think. In, it ran, the, the first the first song about Jamaica independence was apart, actually a Calypso song. Yes. Apart independent from, Jamaica. Uh, in, independent Jamaica. And he. Forward March came forward, after. Yeah. He, he really 
Uh, but Raymond Sharp, mm -hmm. uh, my mentor, the great, the great Raymond. Late, he, great. he was he was part of that writing setup for for that song. Yeah, independent song. Yeah. Yes, um, it's a, it's an amazing situation because Randy Chin started what was basically him and Pat mm -hmm. started a little thing. Studio Seventeen. Studio Seventeen. <laughs> And down, down at North Parade, not yeah. very far from Seventeen North Parade. <laughs> yeah, not very far from where your 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 um, father, father operates. Yeah. yeah, you know, not very far from where my mother lived mm -hmm. for a long time, um, before I I was. Yeah, I mean, in a in a place called Big Yard. Okay. Right on where, Orange where, Street. On Orange Street, where Denzel Lang also yeah. was, was was was. And there. Dennis Brown. And Dennis Brown. Yes. It's an interesting story. Yeah. Um, but Lord Creator, you know, I think it's important sometimes for people to understand the importance of songwriting yeah. and the value of songwriting. Yeah. But not only that, you know, a lot of people love to talk about the fact that Jamaican culture is separate from Trinidad culture and that the music is foreign. We have had a tradition of soca music and calypso music from day one before we had our music apart from Mento. Why do you think Lord Creator used to there? Because all of them used to come up to come and entertain people as Calypsonian. Yeah, but, but remember, know? remember some of our great uh, artists, the first really major international star we have, mm -hmm. Lord Flea, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. right? Um, he was a, 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 a basically a protege of, of Kitchener. In mm, fact, it, yeah. I would not be surprised if Kitchener was yeah. the man who had named him. Mm -hmm. You know? And and so we 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 don't give enough credit to yeah. the interaction. I mean yeah. we talk about Jackie Opel. Yeah. Um, Bajan. Bajan. And then you, you talk about Cuba and, and yeah. Orlando and uh, uh, you know Rita Mali, Rita Mali and Roland all of these. Alfonso, Laurel Akins, Bobby Akins. All, all of these them at, all of these Cuba. people who, who came out of Rico Cuba. Rodriguez. Yeah, you, you know and, yeah. and we could go on and on. And then you talk about even Lynn Tate. Trinidadian again. I mean this come is up, a this come is up a, for the independence with a Calypso band. Uh, because interestingly, you know that 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 Sparrow is invited as a special guest for the independence celebration. People don't remember them things here, you know. But we have this n narrative to say because uptown people grab on to Soka and Calypso, we want to 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 basically separate the the, the cultures and say, oh, there we don't we don't Jamaican culture have nothing to do with with Calypso. But remember, you know, Clyde, when we are growing up, you know. Fire, fire, and I'm a wire, wire. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Tiny, whiny. All of these songs were part and parcel of, of our, our culture. Our, our culture. But we every, were, every, our, every culture was, our culture was more eclectic, you would agree. Yeah. You remember Kitch used to live in a Jamaica? No, Kitch was, Kitch, Kitch, in fact, before Kitch on one of his stints here yeah. when he was going back to England. He spent quite a quite a while here. Lord Brenner used to live here, the one with Ayaya Uru, Ayaya Rambe. He have a club down at Mobile for years. And him go back at Jamaica, go back at Trinidad and him lord him and think say I'm the greatest hero ever. ever. So they, we cannot separate the make, cross fertilization. You know? Look for a creator. Creator come here as a Trinidadian and did us and used to do some calypso at your own tea, you know, like yeah. combine and yeah, but, uh, big the, bamboo and them type of things. Yes. But him jumping at the scare era, do some bad scare tune and then did the tune Kings called Kingston Town. Town. Kingston Town, which, which you will be 40. Yeah. But remember, it was it was Kingston Town was a different song, you know. It was a song named King and Queens of Babylon. And then him change up the lyrics. Same melody and everything. And him change up the lyrics to Kingston Town. Because he loved Jamaica so much. But the, 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 the thing about it is that many, because Kingston Town was actually written before he came to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what, that's, that, that's, the, that's the argument. Yeah, that well. He, well. That he, he wrote the song yeah. before he came to Jamaica. Yeah. And as you say, yeah. he changed up the song and, yeah. and, and made it into a hit. No. no. They, they were, they, they, and the two songs were released in Jamaica, The Kings and Queens of Babylon, yes. was out there. I don't know if him, if him at, at a late, well, him had the two lyrics. Yes, separated. Separate. Yeah, yeah, yes. But the first song was The Kings and Queens of Babylon. Yes. You understand? And then Kingston Town come after that. And I don't think it's as we 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 we, we really giving out any secrets that things had gotten real hard 
with Creator. Yeah. I mean, he actually went back to... Was to, about to go back no, to Trinidad. He went back to Trinidad. Yeah. I mean, and 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 Clancy mm -hmm. went down to Trinidad. Clancy mm -hmm. Eccles yeah. went down to Trinidad and saw him. And tell him, and, say, and say, boy, I think they are. And I think the first check, well, if, well if, after the first check, him come back home. Come back home. <laughs> <laughs> or come back, came back so to Jam Jamaica. Well, Jamaica is him home. Yeah, and, I mean, he's still living in yeah. Montego Bay. Yeah, he's, hey, listen, we must understand, he says one Caribbean, you know, and uh, uh, one of the the baddest balladier in the in the early era was Jackie O'Pell and a Bajan is a Bajan. Mr. Bishop. Cry me a river. Yes. Everybody know you cry me a river. Yeah. You know? Bad, big, bad, bad, big bad tune. And then Jackie went back to Barbados yeah. and started basically a new music. Spooch. The Spooch. Yeah, yes, which I, was influenced by reggae by music. By reggae music, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but Jackie, uh, he died tragically in the, in the, in the, early, in the early 70s. Great, yeah. great, great Caribbean music musician. Right, what do we have next? You, 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 we, we want to um, play the Alton and Eddie song. All right, so that is a, a great song. One of the, the big tune from early tunes from Coxon. And it is probably one of, it was the first number one for... Laurel Akins, ah, not La no. For, for Alton, Alton and, 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 and Eddie. Eddie. Uh, <laughs> Alton, tell me the story that boy. You know, when 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 the song was such a big hit, him get must about six or seven pounds before him and and thing. <laughs> 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 and him say, boy, you know, them happy because them can't buy, them can't give them, them baby mother some money. <laughs> yeah, mother, and, him, yeah. and him say, buy a, 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 a nice shirt. And El Eddie must buy something else. And them happy. No, they have, they have no, no problem. problem. And we must remember, <laughs> Alton Ellis is the uncle of Blacker Ellis and IT Ellis. And, and, and the brother and, to Alton and, Ellis. And, and, and brother to the great Horton Ellis, yeah. right? So, uh, but this song, you know, my old man, I, when when my old man used to have a few drinks and he come in, yeah. it was his favorite song to sing. If I had a pair of wings, <laughs> you know, and, and, we would always, and he would take up his guitar yeah. and sing. It's called Muriel. All right. Muriel, what a tune. Yep. Dennis. Talk, big, talk to us about a little bit more about this song big, and about big, big Alton. Tune, big, big tune. This is a song that was a major, major influence in the music industry. In fact, after this song, uh, Alton and Eddie were like the big thing in Trenchtown, along with Lascelles Perkins, yes. who is another man who was 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 big, who, who, who Peter Tosh used to be his valet for Lascelles Perkins. Press him clothes on them thing there and carry them go 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 steal show with him because remember you know a the, lot of the, people the, you know are we talking about trench town we, yeah. we, we we don't talk about Joe Higgs ah right yeah, yeah. Higgs and Wilson he, ah, that's, that's Manny O oh, oh Manny O we're so we dealing that yes <laughs> yeah so what what happened after this Alton tells me that boy his house became like you know you had Martin Planner. Mm -hmm. For the religious aspect yeah, of things, yeah, yeah, and yes, yes. man circle here. So after a while now, Alton Place used to be like the center for all of the musicians them and the up and coming one of these people want to mm -hmm. be in the music. They used to come there, and after a while, they called it Room One. So Room One, everybody say, "Yo, we have got Room One." The the Ken Boots, everybody, everybody come hang out because of this great song where they, you know you remember say when when this is like a big thing you know because whenever you start our own music no we didn't and have this a, song yes, gets yes. so big along with a song like a manio and stuff and uh and so it, Alton it, is telling me now mm -hmm. that where Coxon got the studio one thing we call him studio studio one is because of that room, room one, one which was his house in Trenchtown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, history, musical history. This is musically speaking. Yeah. Clyde McKenzie here, and I have with me Dr. Dennis Howard, and we're chatting about things that are so important in terms of the <laughs> real 
foundation of Jamaican music because yeah. a lot of that is lost and m much of it is not documented. Yeah. So guess what now? Remember the song I tell you about Driving Juniors? Yes. Herman's song, The Great Derek Harriet. Yes. It is called Lollipop Girl. Yeah. So hear the story about that now. This was done for a sound system called Thunderbird on Maxwell Avenue. Mm -hmm. So uh, because you remember, you know, sound systems want them own a song. So Herman sang on piano. She's so sweet. She's my lollipop girl. Ooh, yeah. Nice ballad tune. Yes. But it's only a dub plate. Yes. So uh, Thunderbird swap it for some other rhythms and give it to Coxon. And Coxon start killed you, agreed with it. <laughs> That's a dub plate. Because remember, in those days, the the the. The competition yeah, between the sound yeah. systems were intense. Mm -hmm. And you know, you used to have these promoters yeah. who legendary, like Count Mug, who, who, who basically is, yeah. you know, is, is my uncle. Yeah. The Count Mug and the great Harry Kwashi. Yep. These men kept, I mean, they were the ones that really pushed Duke Reed mm -hmm. and Cox yeah. out there because yeah. they were having all the dances. Mm -hmm. In fact, the great Mog tells me that Buster, he was the one who told Buster, the, the people's the voice of the people, people the, yeah. he told Buster that he must call himself Prince. Mm -hmm. And the reason was that they had a dance. He, he had made arrangements for a dance. And when, when, when it came about, both um, Duke Reed and Coxon, they were booked mm -hmm. and they were booked close by. Yeah. And he said he needed to keep a dance right on North Street there, right? The, 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 the lawn near Forrester's Hall mm -hmm. there. And he'd keep, he, 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 the, the one on Church Street. And he, he kept the dance and he used Prince Buster. Mm -hmm. He said that was the first dance that Prince Buster Played. used the name yeah, Prince as Buster. Prince Buster. Yeah. I mean, so there is there is so much in the, the, the sound system is so critical. It's intertwined with our music. Because industry. we can't talk even about today, Even today, you know. Because that was really the primary vehicle yeah. for promoting the music at the time because yeah. it was not accepted True. by mainstream radio because we were playing... I mean, oh, oh, pure, pure foreign music, right? So, yeah. so that that was an important part yeah. of the development of Jamaican so, so, music. So, ultimately, with the with the lollipop girl, it Derek Harry them had to 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 record it for for Duke Reed. Yes, because Duke Reed backed them up and said, "Yo, even and record this for me." But in that trouble, can you remember? Said Duke Reed was a bad man, you know. Yes, no, so was stick a, them was up, old, old police stick man. them up and say, "Yo." Come to record it, so they recorded the song. But by them time, they, it had lost its its power because you know it's exclusivity. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Used it's to true. do it, and by the time they record it, you know everybody probably say, "All right, moving on to the next, next, and next it's exclusive important, song." It's important, Dennis, <clears throat> that we talk about the role of somebody like uh, Buster in in the whole scheme of things, mm -hmm. the rivalry between yeah. Coxon. And Duke Reed because Buster was 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 what, what in our days would call a trucker out. Yeah. Because it was a it was a it was an enforcer. Yeah, man, for Coxon. For for Coxon. He was a boxer. He was a boxer. Yeah. And and so people, a lot of people don't know that part of the the history. That that is how. You see, you, and it's and important even, for even your, 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 in, even and and your 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 late great friend. Uh scratch yeah again mm -hmm. coming out of that same kind of experience yeah. he was he was he was, was a salesman uh, all kind of things sweep all the floor yeah he was a bad man to all the yes, time but, uh, yes but it's important to know to know to know and a lot the young people them need to know this i specifically mentioned that peter tosh used to be the valet for lascelles perkins and if you look flabber holt great musician great, great he musician. was a dancer man him, them them man they used to go a dance, go dance, and then when the dance done, and them, them him and Lego them go take up all of the back the of them left, the great and Lego. sell them as some little youth. <laughs> but the point where I'm I'm trying to make is that everybody everybody want to start from the top now. Everybody want nobody no want be a, them nobody no want pay no dues. And if you look at your Copeland, Copeland was a dancer in the early days before him do anything else. Yes, he was a dancer. Yes, that. 
Sky Juice, the Sky selector, Ju- was no. a dancer too. I, I, I can't remember. I, Not I, even a reggae dancer, a funky no, dancer. I, I, no, but I remember as a little boy with seeing Sky Juice yeah. when he just come from country, mm. right? That time Sky Juice had the big belly and thing. Yeah. And when you see Sky Juice, I mean, a, a funky, funky, funky chicken. Yeah, yeah when, if, him, if him going to one party and a, a, another dancer when him Skanka was there. Yeah. I, again, you know, people are going like dancing start from Bogle. Ridiculous. No, Sparky no, and Pluggy. No, no, no. You have uh, 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 the holy pom, golly pom, boys. Pom, pom, pom. pom, pom. Yes, a I, bunch I of them. Yeah, and we, and, we, and we are move it up now to all of them people where we are talking about Flubber Holt and all of them. He used to have a, a dancer named Skanka. One of the baddest dancers used to come a, a, a Gemini dancing because Gemini mm. is another big sound where no, kind of forget. No, because, and, and, and even, I mean, because that played a big role in launching Sky Juice mm-hmm. too. So we hear with Sky Juice, you see. So when Sky Juice, Skanka, they, they, it was a competition, you know. Sky Juice makes some move and Skanka make two move. And Skanka always kind of beat him up in terms of the movement. You know, you know what happened usually? Sky Juice, <laughs> Sky Juice used to flow fight. If you look, <laughs> if you look like him, he'll lose the dance. Him fight. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> him broke a fight. But but but, but we can't we cannot we cannot we cannot underscore sufficiently the role of the sound system yeah. Dennis, in in all of this. You know, I mean I was exposed to a lot of the music and you were too mm-hmm. well you 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 were more active because you are a selector from yeah, early. Yeah, from early, yeah. You understand? Mm. But I was exposed I mean, going down to Grata Swing and and those places down to down to to to, to Small Man Paradise, Roddy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Eagles Roost. Eagles Roost with yeah. Yacht and Side Cuba yeah. Yeah. and and, y- um, yeah, and 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 Clinton Ward and, mm-hmm. and those men. Yes. And then you had you had the situation you, you, I mean, um you you, you, you you had the mighty burner. That used to play Soul Shock. Yes, a lot, a lot down, a lot down in, in and Naya. Yeah. Naya, Naya, Naya. Grotto Swing. N- Grotto Swing. Well, Naya is still, still there. Still Lord of Bell. I'm still, I'm still having bar at, at, yeah, at, yeah, r- yeah. Right at Slap and Road. Soul Tone. Yes, those Stocks. Yes. Shanghai. <laughs> Shanghai, your yeah, song. Yeah, because uh, and, uh, this is important to say, you know, because guess what? We're talking about ballads. And all of them sounds that we are talking about, you know, hardly used to play Jamaican music, you know. It's pure soul it's music. It's soul music, yeah, because because soul music was the dominant the big thing. Thing, even when they used to when, when the when, shy lights and the stylistics but, and the delphonics but, and the temptations. In the seventies, in the seventies, the, from the late sixties into the seventies, you had promoters like Clancy Eccles, Horace, uh, Horace, Horace, when name again? Horace Forbes, Forbes. Mm. Horace Forbes. And all of these men who used to do like concerts during the Christmas, and and them used to do it all over the place. Most of these bills were as reggae soul, soul reggae extravaganza. Soul was an integral part of our existence. In terms of the, 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 the there were more discos than sound system. The name sound system started out in the forties, fifties. By the sixties. Uh, marketing, was... ma- true marketing, true marketing, running as well as say, oh, I want to make it come up town. So make we call them disco. That's how Mary Tone, that's Mary Tone, Mary Tone, Mary Tone was the first disco. first disco. Musically speaking, Clyde McKenzie here with you. What a program. Dennis Howard. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Howard, boy, may I tell you, musically speaking, musically speaking, Clyde McKenzie here with Dr. Dennis Howard. What a show. The Blues Busters. Tell classic. me a little bit about the Blues classic, Busters. Classic, classic, Well, you know them come, Lloyd and Philip. Montego come Bay. from Montego Bay. And they were balladeers from day one. Bad. Uh, I think them they do one, like, if Wings yeah, of a the, Dove. The, the, wings of a Dove, yes. But mostly. It, most, and they were signed to Ireland. Yes, they, they were. They were also signed to Capitol Records. Most people don't know those things. <laughs> These guys yeah. were huge. Huge. You see, a lot of people don't understand the connection that we have with 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 Jamaican Jamaica and R and B music, you know. Another group that was signed to I think Polydor was the Chosen Few. Yes. And, and they were they were they they came off. They were there was as a as a Derek Harriet group and they were basically a, a mirror of the Shy Lights. People don't don't I mean 
Derek Harriet is another key player. Oh, key, key. In this business yeah, because... He have a ton load of ballads. No, no, yeah, what, what can, can I, I do? do? Um, you know? ch- too late, she's, she's gone. gone. yeah. No, but, but the thing is, as a producer, mm. he was the first man to record Dennis Brown, you know, yeah. with Lips of Wine. Yeah, yeah. And many people, many people don't, don't, don't recognize that. That the role, and then, I mean, he, he had his, 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 his shop. Yeah. I mean, which was a key point for people who uh, won. And, and he was a, 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 a major performer himself. Oh, brilliant you performer. Know, and, and had Keaton Tex, Scotty, yes. the chosen few. Uh, uh, what's his name again? That's life. Oh, oh life. What's his name again? Uh, oh, God. Rudy Evans. Rudy Evans. Where Rudy was? Rudy, 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 Rudy Evans. Um, I don't remember. Oh, Rudy Mills. Oh, Rudy Mills. Oh, that's life. Yeah, Rudy Mills. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's major stuff. And Fight with all your... And, and the Blues Busters were the champions, basically, of Jamaican soul. Because we can't call it soul by now. Yes. R- the R&B f- vibe. In fact, the Blues Busters probably... Most of them used to live abroad, and then they come back to Jamaica. Yes, but they're, you know? they're buried in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Montego yeah, Bay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. In point yeah. of fact, I know, um, I think Monty and Winst- Winston and both Winston and Monty yeah. had a project yeah. um, in terms of entombing them and yeah. all of that. Don't and the Busters used to, the, the, the group used to be associated with, with uh, Byron Lee. Yes, I mean, Byron. And, and this, is, this is a thing um, that, uh, now, you know, Oh, Bar- you know, the, Baron Lee holds a special place for me personally because you know I, I'm a blue blood. Yeah. Um, Dennis, Georgian, is a pur- I'm a purple. D- <laughs> D- Dennis is a purple heart. So, <laughs> so I mean, he, he Baron holds a special place because actually the Dragoners was was founded at St George's College. Yeah. And uh, you, I think the earliest manager of Baron Lee and the Dragoners was actually Ryan Peralta. You know, mm-hmm. before running as Ryan. Yeah. And that was, I mean, they used to play at Emmett Park, and after that, you know, things just move. And, and it's important for us to, to point this out, though, you know, Dennis, that regardless, and, you know, you have controversy because, yeah. you know, the 1964 incident yeah, yeah. With, 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 World's Fair. with the World's Fair mm-hmm. and thing. There, you know, there are some people who thought that Byron went there unfairly mm. over yeah. the scatterlights, yeah. and it's something that you know it's it's still a matter of of debate. But one of the things you can't discount was that Byron helped to move the music uptown. Mm. Yeah, gentrification. Yeah, he did. He, yeah. He, yeah, he did. And uh, it's, it's amazing, <laughs> you know, the the man who is uh, responsible for the, the boat scare. And sound system being gentrified in a way. Is Ronnie Nazarala? Ronnie, yes. He was the man who called sound system disco because he tell, told Winston Blake yeah, to, him, say, to call it uptown, disco. Uptown Meritor, people yeah, not going to go, go to, to, to a sound, sound system. system. Yes. So they must call, call it, disco. it disco. And he was the man who created that horrible dance. That is no. That is that is no. Yeah, that's yeah. Call it scare dance. Yeah, because yeah. It was that was that wasn't really the scare dance. That's not another scare dance. Scare dance that's a foolish. No man, I mean scare dance is a shuffle. Shuffle shuffle. and 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 it was scare dance was basically based off the swing. Yes. And the 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 boogie woogie and the shuffle. shuffle. All of these. You yeah, know, fancy footwork. Yeah, fancy footwork and very, very acrobatic type of thing. Yeah. Uh, but but that not going but, to but run it. No, swing but, no, up down. No, and, and, and a lot of people wouldn't be able to do yeah. that. So, so, it, I mean, so them do so, some so, little hand movements. Sc- sc- yeah. sc- so sc- I, I hate when sp- I see people representing ska music and do it that way. <laughs> because it's not authentic. No, it it's not. The, it it's is the gentrification of our music, which has never worked. Every time we try gentrify the music, it no work. Every time, when 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 in Britain them start put strings to, to reggae music, it flop after a while. A very few other songs them got through. Well, 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 well Ju, Ju, our friend Juno Lincoln was 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 a man who loved to put strings to some of these these songs. Ah, uh, <laughs> well, well, I don't remember that part of it because. Uh, no, because I mean, like, 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 he, he has he has taken credit to say yeah. well, some of those John Holtz and thing he actually yeah. remixed them yeah. and and did things like that yeah. in Britain. Listen, but but it never worked after a while. Listen, it uh, it reached to the point. Remember, although we are go off course. Remember at one point, you know, in 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 because of somebody the top BBC 
presenters, I can't remember his name right now, he was one of them, you know, who said reggae music, when it was now reggae, who said that reggae music sounds like it making a toilet. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and, and people like Desmond Decker and Jimmy Cliff used to say, them now do no more reggae and don't associate them with no reggae again. The guy where they do the song and him, uh, the ink is black, the paint is white. Together yeah. we learn yeah. him, to him clear, him, him, let me look it up. Him, the child uh, him, is black. Yeah, our, I don't remember if it's that song. Just give me a minute. He, he decided and said, listen, I didn't even know what me had done. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, what him name but again? But it can't, it can't. Horace, I'll tell you what him name. Did, did, uh, didn't Ken... Can do a version of 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 the the, the the Ken Lazarus. Didn't he do a version of the Ink Is Black? Probably. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is he? So, uh, but but the, back to my gentrification argument. A lot of times it don't work. When I, when you hear now, the for the original version of Book of Rules, and yes. when you hear the strings one, yes, it's cheese to chalk. Right. I think it worked with people like. Holt. Holt. Yes, because of his voice. Yeah, and, yeah. And yes, yes. It, enough of it work. Yeah. But, but it wasn't going to be sustainable. Yeah, it wasn't something that, that you could use across artists. I, I, I remember when Bob Andy was signed and he and Marcia did Young, Young Gifted, Gifted and Black. Black yes. And then they did this album called Strange World. And a lot of... Tu -tu 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 it's a strange world. To all kind of strings and all kind of things. Uh, when I listen back to it now... But then it's you wonder. some but some some of some of some of some of um John Holt's original songs. Yeah. I mean, like Do You Love Me. It yeah. Had, those 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 were songs that had strings from original from, from here. From your boy. Ramon, your boy, Ramon. Ra Ra Ramon, yes. yeah. Ramon Young. So that's why it kinda it kinda worked for For John Holt. For John Holt. Yes. Because violin was always yeah. on his song. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that 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 was that was that was pretty big, um, but um, we 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 we're talking now about mm. the the arrangement of some of these these songs, and you're saying that you think that the 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 the, the effort to gentrify really, it, pretty it, pretty it, 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 it didn't it didn't it didn't expand it. No, when Blackwell was doing it, never work. Remember, you know, the first set of songs Jimmy Cliff do. In England, you know, were pop songs, you know. Yeah, but but let me ask, but let me ask you a question though. And it never but, worked. But but when 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 Blackwell did, yeah, Marley with the, I mean, he kept Marley as reggae, mm -hmm. but he certainly had the infusion of rock. Yeah. Uh, with, with no. Guitar. Hello, you, you, hello, blues, huh? blues. You see, we well, forgot to the root. Is not rock. Is blues. The musicians that he used, Rabbit and them, they were blues player, not rock. And mm -hmm. sometimes we confuse yeah, but, but, it because of the the the, 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 no, the, this, the no but 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 the but appropriation most, of our music by white people. Oh, all right. So so, so, so I'm call, saying. So don't call it. Don't call it. It is rock. blues. The, all right. Okay. Because when Bob when Bob decided to say, hey, this thing has sound good, he went for what? Blues player. Yeah, but, but a Jamaican Mo, Junior Marvin who was a blues recorder, and him go for Al Al Anderson, Anderson yes. who is a blues. Uh, Guitarist. So you, 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 don't you think that the, the intent was to attract a white audience absolutely. and a rock, and a rock yeah, audience? Absolutely, yeah, but absolutely. But you're but saying don't call it Don't, don't call, call it blues because, because... Don't call it rock. Listen, where, where Rolling Stone get it from? They got it from... I mean, they, they get it from Muddy and all of these people. Where Beakers get it from? They get it from all of these people. You see the album named Rubber I mean, Soul? I mean, I mean, it's... it's, 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 it's um, Richards and thank and, and, you. Uh, yeah, so so no, we're not we're not saying. I yeah. mean, Jeff Beck, the whole of them, they learned the, the, all these English guys. Yeah. They learned their music yeah. from our um, blues guys. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. can't. We, we, we're not we're not saying that. But yeah. but but they eventually morphed. They, they they were they didn't classify themselves as 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 blues. But you're no, no, I, I no, agree with you. No, they yeah. cla yeah. classify themselves as rock. Yeah, but so, the point but, is, but it was you're saying that yeah. it was blues influence. Be not blue because the musicians who played on that album were blues musicians. They were not uh, rock musicians at the time. So the sound might be familiar to the to the to the, the, the rock to, to the rock sound, mm. which is what uh, Blackwell's intention was to make them cross over in the into market, the rock, into the rock and into market. the rock market and the pop mask because Blackwell has always done that with all them artists. Them him try and make them go go cross from Millie Small 
because you remember after Millis, even 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 when people tell me about uh, lollipop, my boy lollipop is a is a ska song. No, it's not. A, it's, no. it's a watered down. No, it's a what? Yeah, it's a what? Pop no, no, influence it's a pop, type it's a of thing. No, no, I'm I not mean, scared that. That's not scared, really. And I don't think. And and that was and that was, and the intention of Blackwell was not to necessarily present. No, scare. he wanted he wanted something that was accessible, 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 accessible to, the to the market. And that song, that <laughs> song was the foundation, basically, yeah. of all the wealth that that would lead to you too. And would lead to Bob Marley and so many of these other great careers. Yeah. And we must give credit to the man Ernest Adair Wrangling. Yep. The man who arranged that song. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times people talk about the song mm. and they forget. And people don't realize it's a cover. It's a cover. Barbie Gay did the, the, the original and Wrangling said that 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 Blackwell brought it to him and said, try it. Mm -hmm. Blackwell was 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 he's a restless experimental. Yeah, you man. Can, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't take that away no, from I, him. I, I, I genius. No, no, he he is he I, is Listen, men I know all this are one little place. So bless and 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 privilege to create so many great musicians. Can you realize that we as individuals have been so fortunate to be walking amongst and be friends with so many geniuses. That's a privilege. That, that's, that's a privilege. Wrangling, <laughs> Slide on Bar, <laughs> Coxon, because them, them don't love give the man him credit, but Coxon. Oh, God, you know. Jackie, me too. I, no, I mean, I, you, you, when, 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 when you're talking about these people now, oh, tears coming know? to my eyes almost. Leroy Siblis, BBC, hey. Ken Booth. <laughs> I mean, Al, Alton I, I, Ellis. I, I, I rep, you, you know, we, we, we have so many sessions with them. You remember one night, me and you and Sly mm -hmm. sat in our hotel. Uh, with Toots. Uh, uh, with, no, oh, no, no, the one in, in Miami. In a, yeah, in, a, yeah. in, a, in a Florida, yes. yeah. And we sat there and we spoke about the music. We sat in the lobby. I, I think Willie Linda was there too that night. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we sat and we chatted about music for the whole night. Yeah, man. Till, till morning. And one night again, me and you and Toots. At, at, the, at it was at Hilton. Was Hilton Hotel. Yeah, yeah. We sit on the poolside. Yeah, yeah. And when the sun come up. Yeah, was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, so, yeah. So, so this, this is... This is the amazing privilege that, that yeah. I mean, I remember Striker Lee saying to me one time, you know, I never knew, I always ask myself, how come you, at your age, you know the music so much? Mm. And I said, maybe it's just bright and bright, but then I find out, say, is Mugget grow you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I mean, say, I'm not so bright after yeah. all. I just have a good teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? The yeah. great, the great, the great market. Yeah, Jimmy Solo used to carry me go Cox and Studio. We sit down and and heal up the great Solo. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know it, it, can we know you're listening in yeah. a Solo? Every, every, every time Ken Boots say me, oh Jimmy. Every time Stranger calls say me, oh Jimmy. Everybody, everybody just asks me for Jimmy. Anywhere I'm going in the world, everybody asks me for him yeah. because no, no, him and all of them are no, man. I mean, another night me and you. Oh, Dean Fraser, Number Rob. I grew up with Number Robinson. I grew up with the mystic revelations of Rastafari. Yeah, well, that? well no, with that, number the, Joe Ruglas. Oh, Ruglas! No, yeah. Ruglas. Ruglas is one is one of the man that were raised me too, you know. Yeah, you know what? What a figure that was. I yeah, mean, about seven, about seven foot tall. <laughs> 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 Hands that could. could with a baritone could, voice. Yeah, yeah, about a song yeah. name. Tenements of the mind yeah. <laughs> was yeah. revolutionary figure. Yeah, man. That, no, that's another man. That's another man. <laughs> Along with Sparrow Martin, yeah. those men. Oh, I just saw Sparrow and him say feel up, Jimmy. Jimmy, Sparrow did tell me to feel up. The great, the great Winston Sparrow Martin. These are remarkable men. The unmistakable voice of Keith, Keith Lynn. Lynn. Mm -hmm. Ah, B L and D, Baron Lee and the Dragoneers. Yeah. Musically speaking, Clyde McKenzie here with Dr. Dennis Howard. Dennis. I don't think sometimes we fully appreciate the contribution of the Chinese community yeah, yeah. to Jamaican music. Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, because they Kesh were... Chin, all of them. No, Byron uh, Lee. Byron Lee. Hukim you're talking, Brothers. The Hukim Brothers, yeah. I, I mean, at Channel One. That, yeah. I mean, they changed our music in a significant way. Yeah, man. I mean, and they, they, they brought Sly... Sly and, of, and of course, Keith Lynn Keith with Lynn, you know, with, with this big bad song with Byron. Yeah. And, and you're talking about 
um the the the, the chins yeah R- randy and, and miss pat and chris and yeah. <laughs> you know a big contribution to the big, music big, big contribution big, 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 big. this uh, particular song even this song and then and then and then we 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 we, we, we can't forget the man who started bob marley's career and 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 kong leslie kong yeah he the man where bob recorded his first two songs mm-hmm. you know um which again a lot of people don't realize how important jimmy cliff was to bob marley's career yeah, yeah. you know yeah. because he's the one who introduced him yes introduced him uh, and, and, and derek morgan was the a and r mm-hmm. at the time yeah you know um and you know, Derek. When when Derek tells these stories, I, I had the, the 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 great pleasure of going to look for him. Um, I think it was earlier last year, mm-hmm. um, and it was. I mean, D- D- Derek is an unbelievable storyteller. Oh man, yeah, man, <laughs> and a brilliant producer, brilliant mind, and brilliant, brilliant songwriter, and an amazing performer. Oh, and I don't think him get the kind of credit where no, him no, deserve. no, no, no way, you know? no way, no Derek, way. Derek is amazing, unbelievable, and, and, the, voice and the longevity. I mean, he, he, I mean, Derek is eighty odd now, yeah. 80, 80, about eighty four, yeah, and still when performing, you, still performing, yeah. you know, and, and 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 when you hear the voice, because you know those voices are not processed, yeah, so it is the authentic stuff. Yeah, man. it is unbelievable. Mm. I mean, I. But, I that put the song Empty Chair, I want to say something about it in terms of the, the musical arrangement. It's an amazing thing. You see, the sound of that time, this is the, the basically, when you hear the sounds, especially, the, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it's Winston Wright playing the organ, Play, playing the organ on yes. this one here. But it, but it, it it's amazing. And this, the, the orchestration and the music oh, the arrangement is brilliant. was almost similar to what the Beatles and the Doors was doing at, the, at at that time right around the same time yeah so um, that's when I when I hear people love talk about <clears throat> you know the young people nowadays and because they are using influences from elsewhere and people are criticizing like trap dance or, no but but, and but, but borrowing here. borrowing is an essential part of creativity we have never stopped borrowing never I mean, the yeah. Beatles, yeah, no, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, yeah. they were boring. They went to America. They saw, they were listening to stuff from America. The yeah. black, the black, I mean, the... the, the Listen, the, Rubber Soul is one of them. I think it was them second album or third. Rubber Soul, is it is it is labeled as rock, but no rock music ended up on it. It's Little Richard. soul, country, blues, and everything named black music on it. <laughs> you understand? Know People don't understand that um, one of one of the things I've I've found over the years is that the best sellers of black music mm. have been white artists yeah. <laughs> historically, yeah. and that 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 you could go before Elvis Presley, yeah, yeah, to but Eminem, it, but and, white supremacy and, and, caused and, that. You know, white supremacy caused that. You know, them always appropriate and and they get the better of it, and then we get the 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 little the chumps riff-raff. chumps. Yeah, <laughs> you remember when at the, the dawn of the, the the George Floyd black 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 uh, black Lives Matter movement. Pro, yes, a big company like BMG admitted. Listen, we shafted all of our black black performers. We give them horrible deals, and you know, say on a whole, record deals are horrible. But the black, the black, the black ones got got, got, got worse because worse. because they had less leverage. Yeah. Um. In in terms of even the people who represented them yeah. sometimes. Look, and some people are saying now R and B as we're talking about ballads, R and B is dead in America. Why? Well, you know why it's dead? Because the people who control the music industry not interested in hearing, uh, that kind of music. They want to push a particular type of music. So the rapper them when I talk about people for dead and drugs and all of them stuff there. That's what they push. They they because over sexualize. It, it, it fits a stereotype. It oh, they, 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 because again, you know, is the is the white gaze, you know. Them love the white the, the white people, them love the gaze of seeing black people in a particular way. Them over sexualize Cardi B's and all of them, everybody are fair wind up and do all kind of sex thing. And then uh that's what they push. Anybody who have an alternative, they are not signing them. But the music is out there still. So people have to start, listen, go find the music instead of let American record companies, not even American, international record Inter- companies, because yeah. one of them owned by Japan, one owned by France, and one owned by America, the three. Y- yes, because main, that, main that, that's, how, that's how concentrated the ownership of, of um, 
the music business is now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in years gone by, you you know, you had all of these labels and thing. The thing is heavily concentrated. And and, as, and and the thing is, I want to make two more points before you play the next song. R and B music is still alive and well, and it is and and uh, if you notice the, the Africans them are uh, them own R and B. Yes. And maybe that's gonna be the resurgence of R and B. And we must recognize, just like what we're doing here now, we're recognizing the major contribution that Jamaican have, 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 have done, musicians and songwriters have done to, to record so many wonderful R&B, soul, rhythm and blues, whatever you want to call it, or ballads. No, and that's that's an important thing, and and we, we need when we come back we're going to be talking about Beresford Hammond ah. because <laughs> he has made a remarkable contribution in that area, but we're gonna we're gonna head to the races and 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 when we come back we'll hear a little bit more. This program can't be one episode. It's 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 far. It's it's just just too much to talk about. We're gonna have to <laughs> do this a couple more times. <laughs> This is this is unbelievable. Musically speaking, Peter Scarlett, Fab Five Music. Mm. This one is it's Grub Krupa who did this one. Yeah, wrote yeah, this one. Wrote this one yeah. yeah, yeah. Original. Soul Asking music. for love. This is you know when when I like a boy and I going down all a uh, Anatone and Grata Swing and um, Eagles Roost mm. and I dance with all them big one you know. Because that's that's how I get all my little drinks, you know. Mm. Because mm. I'm boy, look, boy, I can dance. See, man, I'm a step all them tune with the, <laughs> them big one, you know, and help you with the younger girls. Yeah, you know, man. Yeah, I'm the big one, them get that, yeah. that kind of thing, you know. You, you, you get you, you, yeah, your thing, stay yeah, away. You get, you, you do, the, the door open. Yeah, yeah, you stay. You stay you're nice, yeah. man. And you get ratings. Yeah. Where yeah. you can, you know, your schoolboy, and you step them tune with all them big, big woman, there. Yeah. all them big, and all big, big glow woman, them where to about, yeah, you know. Man. Yeah. Top notch. Yeah. They mean, I'm one have enough money, and them. <laughs> from them, 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 them wrist up to them, up to them neck. <laughs> Pure gold. Yeah. Yes, and them chest covered with gold. Yeah. Hey, but, but let me tell you, man, when, when, when you're talking a while ago, it does bring back some awesome memories of my youth, of our youth, where it was, you know, great music, great vibe, good people, love and togetherness. Yeah, although you did have the violence. Yeah, violence. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, you, 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 you were embraced by older people back in them days. Uh, so all of my father's friends. And yeah, as, long as, as, long as, as long as you have money. As long as you have money. Of course. Yeah, man. Yeah, you couldn't have that. Yeah. You, you can't. Be yeah, because my, my, my old man used to carry me to the track um, on Saturdays. And when yeah. we stop, we stop out at Maki Bar, um, Spanish Town Road. And it's yeah. pure big man. Me, I drink. Me, yeah. at a 10 year old. Yeah. And, 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 and less than that. And, yeah. But my father knew where I was. Yeah, man. So what, what this is telling us that our musical vintage or our musical pedigree is sometimes more than what we think it is. And it's more amazing because sometimes we just take these songs for granted, you know. And some of us don't even know that some of these songs are Jamaica, done by Jamaican and produced in Jamaica. Grub Cooper is somebody... Uh, as a composer, um, you know, we, we, we tend to identify him with soca music yeah. and Fab Five and the yeah. jump up and thing, and tiny whiny and blah, blah, blah. But um, the, 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 the contribution to ballads and uh, to, to and I reggae, mean, reggae like yeah, one man. drawn, yeah, that, one that, draw. that, that, that yeah, kind that of thing. Rita Marley, whole entire album the, yes, produced. Yes, you know, and, you and, know, and, and, and then... And then, and then, even from from the commercial side, mm. because he did a, the, the oh, five, Lord. They, they did an enormous amount of jingles. I'll never forget yeah. Campari. Yeah, Campari. Yeah. When when yeah. Campari never ever yeah. stopped. Yeah, I mean some of those old Air Jamaica. Yeah, man. And, yeah, I mean and NCB. Yeah, I mean people like him, Peter Ashburn, uh, and Boris Gardner. But you see, them three people there. Eh? All, is, uh, all, all associated with ballads because we don't touch a Boris Gardner yet. You know? No, I mean, we, we're not touching on a Peter Ashburn stuff. No, but I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, no, I would want to, if, if we're going out, I want to go out with Peter Ashburn's When You Love hmm. because that to me, with, from age you've above, captured me. Th that to me is one yeah. of the greatest ballads. So, I mean, I, just, just find, I mean, 
Just fight. So, so, so big man. When I go do Beres. No, I will not touch. We will not, we not reach <laughs> Beres yet. Yeah. No, uh, all right. Because you see. No, no, no go, ahead with, because, go, ahead, go ahead with because, your tune. No, because, listen. No, because, yeah. listen. Beres, we have to give a whole section. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to give about half hour to Beres. You're right. So, so we don't want to start yeah. Beres and don't, and don't finish Beres. Yeah. You understand? Because he, I mean, that transition, and, and you would be able to speak of that transition very well because you, I mean, were pivotal yeah, at man. that point. Yeah. When that, with the, the, talking about the, the, the time, your time at IRFM. Yeah. Uh, um, so when, 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 when Beres moved from this smooth ballad into, into the reggae thing, yeah. I think I th yeah. that's something that we're going to have to talk about on the next program. Definitely. Because that is a whole... So let's hear this other let's, song let's, now. let's hear this one now. When You Love, Peter Ashburn's... And because we, we got have to, it? No, we, we have to... No, no, it's... it. Oh, what happened? We don't, we don't have... You have to find that, man. AJ Brown, you have to find that song before we go. This is what is going to take us out. Dennis, mm -hmm. I mean, it is a, it is a classic... <laughs> Right, and we must find it. Hey, I'm, I'm just remembering when you talk about AJ Brown, you're talking about Funky Brown. Yes, Ice. When you no. love is no, written by Peter AJ Brown. Brown. AJ, AJ Brown. Brown. AJ yeah. Brown. Yeah, there's a song by I see you in the hour of the day. These words I sing, sing to you, you, I hope. I mean, that was a string in your heart. heart. Wherever love is on the I, pain, I see you, A song man. to sing of Reveille. Yeah, man, Funky Brown. Funky I Brown, see, man. I see you every hour, hour of the day. day. We don't touch things like... Well, we, we have Zappo to, you know. Yeah, man. The soft yeah, songs, the yeah. softer side of yeah, Zappo, you know. Sweet love in love. Yeah, and, 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 and mystic, mystic mood. Mystic mood, you know, we, so let, let us let us go with when you love because this one from the great Peter Ashburn and AJ Brown. This is how we're going closing you know, up because this one is a classic. Lady saw this said that's when when she and Beanie was doing healing. Yeah. It's a classic. This musical is speaking is a classic, <laughs> and we're going to have more editions of this. Clyde McKenzie here, musically speaking. Wanna thank Danita Doyle. Wanna thank Kevin Williams. Wanna thank. My nine tenths, Maxine, and, and my sister Shireen says that you have to have more of this program here because this one is too good. You can't have one version. And Jimmy Solo, you hear your boy? Oh, bad. Uh, <laughs> big, big up my childhood friend, Michael Nunez. Yeah, love your brethren. Respect. Yes, yeah, people calling in and saying, boy, I love the program. So we're going to go out with this one from A.J. Brown. A Peter Ashburn production. I said. 